Hello and welcome to the UTM Financial Mathematics video on annuities. In this video we will look at investments, mortgages, sinking funds, and trust funds which have regular payments made either into or out of an account at fixed periods of time. We will consider their values in the past and in the future while a particular interest rate is applied. Let's have a look at the future value and the present value of lump sum investments or debts. If we want to find the future value of an amount P, have a look at the relationship between P and S on this timeline. We would use the future value formula S equals P times 1 plus R to the power N. On the other hand, if we want to find the present value of an amount S, again, S is in the future with respect to P, then we would use the present value formula P equals S times 1 plus R to the power minus N. Now, armed with these formulas, we can have a look at what happens with annuities. What is an annuity? Well, an annuity is any finite sequence of regular payments, R, made at fixed periods of time over N payment periods. Note that we will assume that all the regular payments are made at the end of each period. Let's have a look at the timeline that illustrates this. Here are N periods, and the payments are being made at the end of each period, and they are regular amounts of R. The present value of an annuity is the sum of the present values of all N regular payments, as illustrated by this timeline. Using the present value formula for each of the regular payments, we get A, the present value of the annuity, to equal to R times 1 plus R to the power minus 1, this being the present value of the first payment, plus R times 1 plus R to the power minus 2, this being the value of the second payment, and so on, all the way to the nth payment, with r times 1 plus r to the minus n being its value, its present value. Using geometric series, we can rearrange this to get the formula a, the present value of the annuity, equal to r times 1 minus bracket 1 plus r to the power minus n, all divided by r. Here, capital R stands for the regular payment amount. Little r stands for the periodic rate, interest rate that is, and n stands for the total number of periods. Here's an example on an insurance payout. Instead of a $200 monthly insurance payout for four years, you decide to take a one-time settlement paid now. What should this amount be if interest rates are at 6% compounded monthly? We start the solution by drawing a timeline. And looking at the information given in the problem, we have that the regular payments are 200 and since interest is compounded monthly, the periodic rate R would equal to 0 0.06 divided by 12, which is 0 0.005, and the total number of payments N would be 4 times 12 equal to 48. 
using the present value formula for an annuity, we get A is equal to capital R, the, the regular payments, times 1 minus bracket 1 plus R close bracket to the power minus N, all divided by R, and we get A equals 8,516.06. Therefore, the present value of this annuity, in other words, the settlement you should be paid now, would be $8,516.06. Let's now look at an example of a combination of two annuities. Given an interest rate of 6% compounded annually, find the present value of the annuity of $2,000 due at the end of each year for three years and $3,000 due thereafter at the end of each year for four years. We start the solution by drawing a timeline. Notice that on this timeline, we have three payments of 2000 marked down for the first three years and $3,000 payments for the last four years. Let's start by considering the annuity amount of $2,000 for three years. Here we have R equals 2000. That's the regular payment amount. Little r is equal to 0 0.06, that's the periodic rate. n is equal to 3, since it's for 3 years. Using the present value formula, we get p is equal to r times 1 plus r to the power minus n. Here, r is the future value amount, and P is the present value amount. We get P1, the total of all three payments, equal to 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 to power minus 1 for the first payment, plus 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 to power minus 2 for the second payment, plus 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power minus 3 for the third payment. This adds up to 5,346.02. Considering the annuity of $3,000 for four years, we have R equals 3,000, that's the regular payment amount of 3000 the periodic rate r is equal to 0.06 it's since it's 6% compounded annually and the number of years n is equal to 4 using the present value formula p equals r times 1 plus little r to the power minus n for each of the four payments, we get P2, the total of the present values of the four payments, equal to 3,000 times 1.06 to the power minus 4 for the first of the four payments, plus 3,000 times 1.06 to the power minus 5 for the second, and so on. And this totals to 8,728.11. The combination of the two annuities, in other words, the three years of $2,000 and consequently $3,000 for four years, is P1 plus P2, as calculated above. And this amounts to 14,074.13. Therefore, the present value of the annuity, which is a combination of two annuities, is 
and 13 cents. Sometimes we are given an amount A, the present value of an annuity, a rate R, the periodic rate, and a fixed payment period N, and we wish to find the periodic payment or the regular payment, capital R. We know the formula for the present value of an annuity is given by A equals capital R times 1 minus bracket 1 plus little r close bracket to the power minus n all divided by little r. When we rearrange this for capital R, we get capital R, the periodic payment or regular payment, is equal to little r times a all divided by 1 minus bracket 1 plus little r close bracket to power minus n. Let's see how we can use this formula to solve the following problem. Sam plans to finance a car that is worth $20,000. If he takes a loan for three years with an interest rate of 5% compounded monthly, how much will Sam's monthly payments be? We start the solution by drawing a timeline. Notice that we have marked down capital R on each of the 36 payment dates, capital R being the periodic payment amount. Here, A is equal to 20,000. This is because, in this case, the loan is the annuity, and the present value of the loan is 20,000. Since interest is compounded monthly, the periodic rate is going to be 5% or 0 0.05 divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.0042 when rounded to four decimals. And n is equal to 3 times 12 equals 36. Using the formula for the periodic payment, capital R, which is equal to little r times a divided by 1 minus bracket 1 plus little r close bracket to the power minus n, we get that the periodic payment, capital R, is equal to 599.78. Therefore, Sam's monthly payment will be $599.78. Looking at the future value of an annuity, we see that it is the sum of the future values of all n regular payments, as illustrated by the following timeline. We use the future value formula for each of the regular payments, and we get S the future value of the annuity is equal to capital R, the last payment, plus capital R times 1 plus little r, the future value of the second last payment, plus capital R times 1 plus little r the, to the power 2, the future value of the third last payment, and so on, all the way to the future v value of the first payment, which would be capital R times 1 plus little r to the power n minus 1. Note that here, little r stands for the periodic uh, interest rate, and uh, little n is the total number of payments. Rearranging this, Using some knowledge of geometric series, we get S is equal to capital R, the periodic payment amount, times bracket 1 plus little r, close bracket to the power n, minus 1, all divided by little r. Rearranging this further for capital R, the periodic payment, 
we get capital R is equal to little r times s all divided by bracket 1 plus little r close bracket to the power n minus 1. Here's an example on a sinking fund. What is a sinking fund, you ask? Well, all it is is a savings account into which regular payments at regular intervals are made. Here's the problem. You wish to set up a sinking fund so that in five years you will have $6,000 to travel around Europe. If you make equal payments into the fund at the end of each quarter, and if the fund earns 8% compounded quarterly, what should each of these equal payments be? We start the solution by drawing a timeline. Here, S is equal to 6,000. That is the case since we want to accumulate $6,000 in the future in year 5. So S is equal to 6,000. Interest is compounded quarterly, which means that the periodic rate, little r, is equal to 8% or 0 0.08 divided by 4, which is equal to 0 0.02. And n is equal to 5 times 4 equals 20. Using the formula for the periodic payments, capital R is equal to little r times s divided by bracket 1 plus little r close bracket to the power n minus 1. Using all the variables that we already know, we get capital R, the periodic payment amount, is going to equal to 246.94. Therefore, your regular monthly payments will be $246.94. To summarize, here is a checklist for solving annuity problems. Obviously, read the problem first and highlight all the given variables and identify them. Draw a timeline to determine whether to use the future value of an annuity or the present value of an annuity. Here is a list of formulas to choose from. Notice that one of the columns gives you the accumulated amount or the present value amount, and the other is rearranged for the periodic payment amounts either for future value or present value. Substitute the given variables into the appropriate formula and solve for the unknown variable. And finally, write a concluding sentence. Armed with this checklist, give the following practice problems a try. Thank you for watching and good luck.